Welcome, this DDI CAD cast will cover SOLIDWORKS 2013, What's New? Drawing and Detailings, Part 1. In this section we're going to cover balloons and auto balloons, uh, dimensions and also a quick section on uh, center of mass reference. Let's uh, go and take a look at the uh, new enhancements to the auto balloon functionality that they added to the 2013 SOLIDWORKS. As you can see we've got an existing bill of materials uh, and then we also have an existing explode that has all the balloons in a sequential order. We're going to go and add some additional parts in here and we want to keep that same sequential order. So we're going to go through, make the additions, you'll see the bill of material update and then we want to get the, uh, the numbers in order. So I'm going to switch over to the assembly here. I'm going to uh, unsuppress the parts that I have in the subfolder. So I'll go and uh, right click and then grab the unsuppress on that folder. You can see the additional hardware that comes in and I'll go and uh, uh, show the explode here in the assembly just so that I can uh, check to verify that the new parts are part of the explode as well. So it looks like they are. So I've got my screws there in the middle and also my additional hardware at the end there. So let's go and collapse this down and let's go and switch back to the uh, the drawing. And we'll see that we've got the additional parts in there, but they don't have any balloons. Uh, bill of material has it has expanded, so it's got the additional hardware in there. Uh, but I want to get all my balloons in a sequential order here again, and I don't need additional balloons for the new parts. So I'm going to switch over to the annotations tab. Um, I'll go ahead and first start out with a, a manual balloon and kind of show you what, what occurs here. So when I drop in a manual balloon, uh, it's just going to take the uh, number out of the uh, the bill of materials. Uh, just happens to be at the end of the sequential order there. So I get those in uh, based off of that uh, that sequence there. Okay. So moving forward, what we want to do is actually make use of the new functionality. So I'm going to uh, get rid of this extra balloon of the uh, subassembly part there, and let's go and get these all in order. So if I go up to my um, auto balloon. I uh, pre-selected my uh, view so that's also a good idea to for this first functionality to work. It uh, automatically picks up that we can resequence the number. So uh, resequencing is checked and then I go sequential uh, order and sequential and then you can see all my numbers uh, follow the uh, bill of material and the bill of materials is actually resorted. Uh, you do have to have a bill of materials for this uh, this new functionality to uh, to to, func to work right. So I'm going to go and hit OK out of my uh, auto balloon, and then we'll go and drag all these balloons into the appropriate sequence there. Do a little tweaking here and kind of make it look a little bit better. All right. So now we maybe we want to actually get rid of all the balloons and actually have the auto balloon uh, start from scratch. Uh, so I'm going to go into Auto Balloon, uh, but again, I do like to pre-select the uh, the view, uh, the drawing view first, and then go into Auto Balloon. Just makes it a little bit easier. Uh, this time we'll go and grab Replace Balloons. You'll see right away it goes through and does a uh, uh, a new balloon for every single part. Uh, but then we have a couple of them that are actually out of sequence, so I knew, do need to turn on the uh, order sequentially. Right away you can see that our first part on the left is 1, our part on the right is 15, and our bill of materials is updated. Um, also, I'll probably make sure that the magnetic line uh, check mark is turned on, just so I can use that to place it. Uh, magnetic line, something that was added in 2012, uh, all you need to do is click on one of the balloons to grab it to, to start with, uh, and then uh, move it into place. Uh, it also allows you to adjust the balloons into the appropriate spots. Some of the other things that they've done a little bit better this year is the placement of the arrow uh, on the particular parts. Uh, it's gotten a lot better than what it used to be. Uh, grabs the edge, grabs uh, the more appropriate location, that way it's not crossing over the part uh, unless it needs to. Uh, so that's some of the things that they've updated with the uh, auto balloon functionality for 2013. Moving right along here, uh, something else that they've added for the balloon text fields, they've given us the ability of doing part numbers and file names. Uh, keep in mind the, uh, the part number is actually the same one that's going to be in your bill of material. Uh, I'll just grab a regular balloon 
and you'll see the the new options here so we've got file name uh, and then we also have part number and these are two items that they've added for the balloon text field so I'm going to start out with file name click on the part drop it off to the side uh, we'll clean up the, uh, the border here a little bit later I'm going to go and do one for part number and again balloon text go and select the part go and drop one off to the side and it takes on the uh, part number that comes from uh, from the uh, part level custom property. It's the same one that you see in the bill of material. So I'll go ahead and hit OK here, and then I'm going to make use of the uh, format painter, t uh, format painter, uh, to actually get all those uh, looking the way I want them to. So I'm going to grab that off the annotations tab, grab one of the existing ones that has the border that I want, and I'll go through and select each of the par uh, balloons that I want it to. Uh, to conform to. Let's see, while we're still looking at the uh, balloons, I, I did want to talk about uh, another new feature too that they've added into the uh, uh, the box that goes around the balloons. Uh, it's actually the ability of adding a padding uh, to a box. So if we do a box for our uh, boundary there, I do tight fit. Well, tight fit in the past always was right next to the, the text. Um, you can manually change it to a specific width. Uh, but the tight fit allows us to conform to whatever length the character is. But the padding allows us to go through and add some additional space on either side of it. Uh, for example, 15 there, I'm going to shift it down to the 2, and you'll see that it'll conform to a nice uh, border going on, or on either end of that particular text. So again, that's just a, a very useful thing uh, added to the, uh, the balloon functionality is that padding feature. I do want to take uh, a little bit to, to do one more thing here with the uh, the balloons, kind of combining the auto balloon along with the uh, uh, the part and, uh, or file name there. So I'm going to go back into auto balloon after pre-selecting. I'm going to do a replace. Uh, I am going to turn off my uh, magnetic lines, so I don't need those. Uh, but then I'll go and switch down to my uh, balloon section, and I'm going to go and pick out the file name switch off the uh, the style there, so I'm going to say none for the uh, the box going around it. Go and accept, and then I'll go and just uh, move these into place, and you can see that we've got the file name set up for each of these parts. Uh, so this might be another dimension uh, of a drawing that you might want to go through and add in. Um, obviously you want to do a little bit of cleanup and get them placed so they're not overlapping. Uh, but This might be really useful out on the shop floor if people need to see which part is which. Uh, as far as the file name, or, or you could do part numbers if you wanted to. Uh, so kind of a, a new functionality that makes it a little bit easier having that file name or part number, along with the, uh, the replace auto balloons there. I'm going to go and transition over to a different drawing so we can start talking about some of the uh, new stuff that they've done for baseline dimension. Uh, if you haven't done baseline dimension, it's actually quite useful. You can set one uh, plane or face as a uh, starting point, uh, but to get to it, hit the down arrow below Smart Dimensions and go and grab Baseline Dimensioning. Uh, so you establish your starting point, uh, and then you go through and you pick all your additional edges or points that you're wanting to to add to the uh, the baseline dimension. Uh, so that functionality has been around in SolidWorks for a while, uh, but what they've added in the 2013 version of SolidWorks is the ability of adding to the baseline. In the past, what you'd have to do is you'd have to go through and delete your dimension or add an additional baseline to establish a, a new starting point. So I'm wanting to add this additional edge to my baseline. So all I need to do is go to one of my baseline dimensions, uh, go and do a right click over it, uh, and then you'll see in the right click menu we have the option to add to baseline. Uh, so all we have to do is pick this option uh, and then go through and pick our additional edge. Uh, this will add it into the uh, uh, the total string, and it'll also space them out automatically for us, which is also really convenient. Uh, but I want to uh, control some of the spacing here a little bit, so I am going to go into my dimension palette, uh, and then go and uh, grab the slider there to do the auto adjust for the placement. Uh, again, with the uh, dimension palette, we can go through and type in the value there. Dimension palette also has been around for a little while. Uh, let's see, it looks like 9.5 or so might be a good spacing for that, and I'll go and click out of that. Let's go and uh, go back into the uh, dimension palette one more time. So I'm going to select all of my uh, baseline dimensions one more time. I'll go base uh, dimension palette again. 
Uh, and this time I'm actually going to grab the uh, uh, the auto arrange dimension. And this is another way, uh, depending on how you have your uh, document property set, uh, this is a great way to have consistency across your entire model. And again, just something that's part of the uh, dimension palette there. Uh, I'll go and uh, undo that just to get our dimensions back to the spacing that fits on the drawing. I'm going to go and zoom fit and uh, let's go and uh, take a look at the uh, section view over here in the bottom right. So let's uh, Let's address this uh, dimension that's got a, a tolerance that's way out of whack there. It's uh, four decimal places. A little too expensive to actually go through and uh, machine that part. Uh, I do also want to look at the dimension at the uh, the part level. So I want to kind of show you what the tolerance is at the part level as well. This is something uh, that they've added to the 2013 version is the ability of linking our parts to our drawing. So I wanted to show you the uh, uh, tolerance here at the part first, and let's go and switch back over to the drawing here again. Uh, you notice that the uh, the part was only three decimal places, drawings at four decimal places. Uh, to link them together, all we need to do is select the dimension here in the drawing, and then they link precision with model. And you'll see that the uh, symmetric tolerance takes on from the other one. I could go and shift it over to a different type of tolerance, so I'm going to do a bilateral. Just go and throw in uh, some different numbers there, uh, and then if making the change here, those changes will also be in our part. So I'm going to go and switch back to the part here again, and let's go and take a look at that same dimension one more time. So you'll see that it also has the bilateral with the exact same tolerances. So it's a great way to keep your consistency of tolerancing from your drawing to your part. So now we can start putting tolerances in the part level all the time and know that we can actually have them show up in the drawing. So the link to precision with model uh, can also be set as a uh, system default in your template. So I'm going to go into my options um, and we'll go and switch over to the uh, document properties tab. And again, if you're wanting uh, this to be part of your template, you'd want to open up your drawing template. Go down to uh, document properties, dimensions uh, group here, uh, and then we have the link uh, precision with model. And you can do that for primary and uh, for dual precision. So if you have a, a second unit um, uh, like inches and metric, but you can do it for both or just one. So you'd want to make that change in your template and then you'd go and uh, save your template so all new drawings would be stored that way. Uh, so again, pretty useful item. So uh, next item uh, that I want to show uh, requires me to, to go through and uh, put in a uh, smart dimension radius here. Uh, but what they've done is uh, they've improved the uh, arrows on radius dimensions. Uh, so typically what would happen if you take a radius and you shove it to the opposite side is um, the uh, arrowhead actually shows up on the wrong side and doesn't look quite right. Uh, not that you'd be wanting to put your part, your dimension over the top of your part anyways, but there are certain circumstances where you do need to, to get that uh, radius uh, dimension to the opposite side. So I'm going to go into Options, switch over to the Document Properties tab, and we'll go ahead and go down to the uh, uh, Dimensions group, expand that out, and then I'll go specifically to the, uh, the Radius uh, uh, subgroup here. And there's this new option called Smart Arrows Attached to Arcs and Point Away from Dimensions. If you wanted this to be on your new drawings, open up your drawing template, make that change, save your drawing template. So now with that option turned on, all we need to do is move our uh, dimension to the opposite side and it gives us a nice clean arrowhead pointing towards the inside of the radius and it gives us a, a really good looking uh, part there. Again, still wouldn't want to be leaving your uh, mention over the top of your part. Alright, so I'm going to go and uh, move right on to the uh, the next topic here. And uh, this is uh, uh, improve control over the uh, the break of extension lines and dimension lines. So I'm going to zoom into the section view. Uh, and it falls into where you might have a uh, chamfer dimension or any dimension with a, uh, a leader line uh, that actually goes and crosses over your uh, extension lines or your dimension lines. Extension lines being the horizontal ones in this case or your dimension lines being the vertical ones. So I'm going to do a selection box uh, just to group all three of these so I can make up the change all in one shot. Switch over to the leaders tab, go and turn on break lines. Break lines have been around for a while. Uh, you can use the document gap or 
uh, override it. Uh, but it's these two new check marks, the extension lines and the dimension line check marks that are brand new. So with those check, it'll actually break the uh, extension lines. Uh, if I bring this down, you'll see that it'll uh, break the extension lines. Uh, so it makes uh, the the ability of those two new check marks allows us to actually control which ones we want and which ones we don't want. So I'm going to select all three of these again, come back to the Leaders tab, and this time I'm going to say uh, uncheck on the uh, dimension lines. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK there. You'll see that uh, it, none of the dimension lines are broken, but I'm going to bring my dimension down, and you'll see my extension lines are now broke, uh, but my dimension line is not. Something else to uh, to be aware of, uh, there is a settings within your document properties uh, that actually uh, uh, will still do uh, break around arrowheads. Uh, so I go document properties, dimensions, break only around dimension arrows. And you got to be careful of that one because if you actually have that one turned on, then the aforementioned uh, um, break extension or break dimension does not work. Uh, but the break around arrowhead is, is actually pretty convenient. I'm going to drop in a couple of dimensions here uh, just to, to illustrate what this one does. Uh, so I'm going to bring my dimension up, drop it into place, uh, and then with that check mark checked in my options, I go to my leaders tab turn on breaks, uh, and then I go and hit OK, and you'll see that it'll actually break around the arrowhead. Uh, but over here, even though those two check marks are checked, uh, it does not break around the uh, dimension line, only the arrowhead. Uh, but again, all depending on what you're looking for in your drawing. So I'm going to go and transition over to my uh, a different part here. Uh, and this is a, a new functionality that's kind of been incorporated into uh, model items. So annotations tab, I'll go uh, insert model items or model items button there. Uh, I'm going to let it do it for entire model, all views, and there's this new button called Tolerance Dimensions. So with that uh, dimension or that button turned on, what allows me to do is actually bring in my uh, dimensions that have tolerances back at my part level. Uh, so if I go and hit OK, you'll see that I have all my dimensions that have tolerances are brought in. Um, which makes it real convenient to, to be able to, to get those in there as well. I'm going to go and undo, go back into model items one more time. This time I'm going to turn off the uh, dimensions mark for the drawing. This time I'm only going to have the uh, tolerances turned on. Go and hit OK, and then you'll see that it only brings in the dimensions that have tolerances. So this might be a good way of getting a, uh, a drawing set uh, the way you need it to with just dimensions that have tolerances. I'm going to go and switch over to a uh, PowerPoint slide here that I've uh, created for the next item. This 2013 item uh, that they've added to the What's New is for the uh, ISO and international standards. Uh, what they've done is for a uh, radius or diameter uh, leader dimensions, they've improved where the, uh, the attachment point is, so it actually attaches to the geometric tolerancing block if you've added a geometric tolerancing block. So they've improved uh, the uh, location of where that uh, line connects to. If you have an existing drawing like what we've got here uh, and it uh, didn't have the uh, the leader attached to the, the correct lo location uh, within uh, options, document properties, um, we're going to go down to dimensions. Uh, there is a check mark that you can actually turn on and it'll update it uh, to uh, apply the uh, the new rule there. So if it did find once that it needed to update, that check mark would be available for you. This uh, next improvement, I'm going to transition through the uh, the magic of uh, video editing here uh, back to our other drawing. I'm going to go and zoom in on this next item. And what this is, uh, is an improvement for uh, radius, uh, diameter, chamfer, and hole callouts uh, with leaders. Uh, so if we have a, a item that has additional text on there, uh, we actually have the ability of controlling where the justification or where the leader actually connects to. Uh, so by default it goes to the center, but we can shift it to uh, be on top. Um, I'll shift it down to the middle there uh, for the next option here, and then I'll go and shift it down to the, uh, the bottom. So we now have the ability of actually controlling uh, where it's actually attaching that, that leader to. And again, that applies to the uh, radius, diameter, chamfer, and hole callouts. Uh, with the uh, the leaders there. I'm going to magically uh, create uh, a, an additional uh, uh, dimension here. And again, this is just uh, my video editing. Uh, zoom in onto that. 
And this is, kind of ties along uh, with the same one that we can actually change where the shoulder is at. Uh, so I've got a radius dimension that's got some text above and below, so I can do the justification of where I want that leader at. Uh, but now I have an additional option that I can go and, and have the, uh, the, the leader actually extend out to the, uh, the dimension. So I'll switch over to the uh, Leaders tab, and it's this check mark called Extend Bent Leaders to Text. So now if we do a bottom justification, you'll see that it extends all the way to that particular start of text. I shift it up uh, to the middle and also the top, and you'll see that that either extends or shortens depending on what the uh, location is. If you want to change this option globally, we go to our Options, Document Properties tab, and again, if you want to change this on your template, open up your template. So I go to Dimensions, and there's this check mark called Extends to Text. We turn that on. I'll go and hit OK there, and now I'll actually uh, do that for any new uh, dimensions. Uh, it'll extend those out to where they need to be. All right, so this is the, uh, the final item for the... Uh, uh, dimension section. Uh, so I'm going to go and go back to a part file and add a center of mass to the part file. This is covered in a, a different section, but quick review of it. Insert menu, reference shop tree, adds it to the uh, the top of the the feature tree there uh, of the uh, the part or the assembly. I'm going to go and make a uh, a drawing of this uh, this part, uh, and I want to uh, illustrate the uh, the way that we actually go and bring that uh, center of mass into a drawing. So I'm just going to grab one of my uh, views here, uh, go ahead and do the uh, projection of the, uh, the other directions, and I'll go ahead and hold Control down to release my uh, 45 there for the isometric. Uh, but to, uh, to add the center of mass, I'm going to switch over to the Annotations tab here, grab Model Items. Um, you can either have dimensions on or you could have it off, uh, but we want to have the uh, in center of mass uh, reference geometry option turned on. Uh, and then up top here, I'll make sure that it's entire model, all views. Go and hit OK, and it drops in the uh, center of mass in all my views. I can also use that to actually add dimensions to. So I can come in here, click it, uh, the center of mass, and then click one of my other uh, features here, or another uh, item. So if the center of mass ever changed, uh, this would also update as well. So it's a great way of getting a dynamic, up-to-date center of mass. So in recap, just a, a great uh, new edition for SOLIDWORKS 2013. Thank you for viewing this DDI CAD cast. Please visit us at www.ddicad.com.